sanctions can be defined in many ways. The maybe simplest or broadest way to define them is that they are a restriction on an economic or political action that would otherwise happen. Sanctions can be imposed by Congress, they can be imposed by the executive branch, Sanctions can be imposed also by state governments or individual businesses might decide not to invest or trade in certain areas or you have divestment campaigns which are essentially forms of sanctions. Often targeted sanctions are political in nature. They may be against particular individuals to keep those individuals from traveling abroad or it may be a sanction to freeze the assets of a particular individual. There's a very broad category of economic sanctions. Some of those could involve trade, just the export or the import of particular commodities. Oil might be the one that comes to mind first and foremost, but there are also sanctions on investment. And there are also financial sanctions, which really prohibit um, not the trade of concrete goods, but put restrictions on the flow of money or the ability of one country to do transactions in the global financial system. American policymakers have found that they can have a huge economic impact by saying to other countries, if you do business with country X, you're not going to be able to open bank accounts in the United States. However, there's increasing concern that America might overuse financial sanctions. It may be that the more America uses financial sanctions and the more it encourages its allies to use financial sanctions, the more incentive there is for countries to do their transactions without using the dollar, without using the American financial system. A sanction is a tool, not a strategy. And that distinction is often lost on people studying foreign policy or even making foreign policy. Often policymakers think about individual sanctions, but if policymakers think about sanctions in a more strategic way, they would think about how could they create an entire sanctions regime that is best geared towards achieving their broad goals. So say your objective is really to get a country to change its behavior. The best contemporary instance of that is Iran. The very explicit purpose has been to bring Iran to the negotiating table. And so there you want a sanctions regime that's very flexible, that you're able to use inducements and threats alongside of sanctions and credibly say to the country in question, if you do this action that's desired, you will get this sanctions relief. This is a very interesting case because in many ways, I think it has revived the interest in international sanctions. Sanctions, I think, will be credited with really playing a vital role in a very complex and complicated strategy. People often ask the question, do sanctions work? I always get a little irritated with that question because I never hear it asked in relationship to any other tool of foreign policy. The answer is yes, but in certain circumstances and when used in conjunction with other tools. So at the end of the day, um, the question is not so much do sanctions work, but are sanctions the best tool policymakers have to use in light of what their other options are? I expect that sanctions will continue to play a very big role in American foreign policy. Faced with a situation where policymakers really want to demonstrate that they're taking action, but aren't in a position or don't desire to take action that could be too expensive in terms of lives or dollars, they may continue to impose sanctions.